Hey dudes, this is Brandon Murphy. Talk about how we're gonna go from a bunch of cruddy, gross clay to some pretty badass masks. And this is the first in a series of three videos. The first video that you're about to watch is going to go over sculpture. Sculpting a mask from start to finish. In this case, we are actually going to be sculpting this exact mask. This is the finished mask, and so what you guys are about to see is uh, a bunch of work compressed into a tiny little video. So, hope you guys enjoy. So we start off with a basic generic head form. Uh, I have this head form uh, for many years, and I've, uh, I got it from a uh, gentleman named David Mosher. Uh, the website is www.davidmosherfx.com. He sells these. Uh, they're just really neat, really nifty to have around for sculpting. So right now I just have a little bit of the clay that I'm using, which is Siobhan NSP Medium. And I've looped it in the microwave for about, uh, you know, in 30 second intervals for about three, three and a half minutes. Um, this just makes the clay nice and soft and easy to apply. You can see I'm just starting to build up some of the areas, starting to rough in the sculpture itself. Um, you kind of start from the high points and work your way down. You notice I started at the brow and the nose and the cheeks and kind of worked my way outwards. Uh, to the top of the forehead and the jawline and the chin. Uh, these are areas that I know will need to be slightly exaggerated due to, the, to uh, the nature of the mask and the nature of the look. And so that's where I start first so that I can kind of work my way out. Once everything is roughed in like this, um, you start kind of smoothing it down with, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, any type of wedged tool would work. Uh, I like to use spoons or any type of old silverware like a knife or uh, like a butter knife or, a, or an old spoon or uh, old tongue depressors or anything you see right there I was checking the thickness of the clay you want the clay to sit on the armature uh, at about at least a half inch thickness um, if not a little bit more and this just allows the clay to remove itself from the armature very easily during the molding process so that way you don't end up accidentally locking your mold in together with the armature you give it a little bit more wiggle room and so, like I said, we're just blocking everything in. Um, this process typically goes pretty fast. Um, however, it is one of those things that you need to take your time on because if you let the secondary forms get away from you or the primary forms get away from you, once you start refining everything, you might have to go back and change things. And that's no fun for anybody, especially if you've moved forward way too far. And then you essentially have to go back and completely redo all of uh, the work that you just did because you got something wrong so all right I'm just gonna let this go for a little while and and uh, I don't know maybe put some funny music in there
Okay, that's enough of that music, right? So, right here, we're just taking some mineral spirits and we're smoothing out some of the uh, rougher areas that still have tool marks in them. You can buff the excess oils away with a little bit of paper towel and some water. Um, that's pretty much all we're doing right here. Um, checking it with the light to make sure that we get rid of any tool marks that might be hiding from us. The shadows of the light show them a little bit better than we can see with our naked eye. All right, uh, now we're up here and we're trying to define the cut line of the mask. I'm using a little bit of masking tape right there to make sure I get a nice straight line, almost like a stencil. Uh, this is just so we know where to cut the mask every time we pull one out of the mold. That way we, don't, we, we always have a consistent cut line, especially with something like this that has to be very specific. Um, I'm going to go ahead and key in some of these surface details. Um, we're just going to be adding a little bit of you know, little blobs and worms of clay up there. Uh, we're going to smooth those down uh, with our fingers and then again with a rake tool and just kind of refine them and blend them together, uh, raking against them. And see how it kind of knocks everything down a little bit. Um, again, always defer to your reference whenever you're doing stuff like this. Make sure that those wrinkles need to be there. Um, we're just going to brush away the tool marks with the mineral spirits again and then buff it with a paper towel and you can see that it's nice and smooth. So, always double check your light. And here we're just making sure that everything is going according to plan, measuring out, um, kind of using our calipers and our eyes to go in there and key in all these little details that need to be added. The most important thing, uh, especially for this process and this type of work, is patience with yourself and patience with your medium. Um, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to show in these videos, is that it requires a lot of dedication and a lot of patience. Whenever you're looking at a finished mask from an artist or even a mass-produced mask at uh, you know, Walmart or somewhere like that, you're looking at something that is essentially the result of many hours of dedication and faithful practice on somebody's part. Um, and that's the most important thing um, that I really want to get across for anybody who's looking to get into this type of work or art in general is practice really does make perfect. I didn't start out this good. As a matter of fact, I wasn't very good at all when I first started out, but I didn't give up on it. And I consistently practiced every single day. And I still do that every single day. And I still have a long ways to go, but I'm starting to finally see some of the success in that practice. And it takes years and years of dedicated practice and dedicated, faithful practice every single day. So um, that's essentially all it is, is just repetition and learning from your mistakes as you make them and adapting and moving forward. So here we're just kind of matching out some of the symmetry on the lines in the eyes and stuff like that. Uh, there's not really a whole lot. We always go back and double check everything with our light. Always go back and double check all your shadows double check how everything looks when it's nice and smooth and, 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 and finished. The worst part is always making sure, you, you know, it's always double checking and making sure that you aren't too far ahead of yourself, that you didn't put uh, too much detail on one area when it's not shaped right. You see right there, I had a little bit of an error, so I fixed it before I went and did any detail work on that area. That way I wouldn't have to go back through and essentially erase what I did just to fix it. So.